Hi, this is Anthony. Welcome back to my show. As always, before I begin, please click the subscribe button below. It really helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks so much. Throughout the world, and in particular the United States where I live, inflation is on the rise, up to levels that we haven't seen in decades. Oil and gasoline prices are skyrocketing, and the price of food is increasing at an alarming rate. There's of course a war going on in Ukraine, which so far has lasted many months and taken thousands of lives, and resulted in hundreds of billions of dollars in damage. And the stock markets in America have dipped into bear territory. Of course, cryptocurrencies, which were supposed to do well in times of turbulence, have shown themselves to be in a greatly inflated bubble, and many, if not most, turned out to be outright scams. Today's spotlight is going to be on Matterport, a stock that I own a handful of shares in. Let's look at some, but not all, of the financials for Matterport that have been recently released in their 10Q. Of course, always do your own research, and I will provide a link to their financials in the show notes. The first group of numbers are for the current quarter compared to the previous quarter. Under assets, cash, and cash equivalents, they've had a decrease of about $40 million. And remember from the note at the top of these figures, they're leaving off three zeros. So that looks like it's a decrease of $40,000, but really it's a decrease of $40 million. When you go down to total current assets, it's roughly the same as the previous quarter. Next slide again shows the total current assets, which we saw at the bottom of the previous slide. And I wanted to show you the amount that they have allocated for Goodwill, which is slightly over $54 million. Of course, Goodwill is one of those intangible assets that is more of an accounting trick than anything else. And again, total assets, not a really big change from the previous quarter, roughly $2 million or so. Here's the page that deals with liabilities and you're seeing that it's gone up from $33 million to nearly $50 million this most recent quarter. Long-term liabilities have gone from $262,000 up to $6.448 million, but the total liabilities have dramatically increased, which you see at the bottom of the slide. Here we see the accumulated deficit is decreasing and the total share or stockholders' equity has more than doubled. And when you add the liabilities and stockholders' equity, it's up slightly from the previous year. Looking at revenue, it's gone up about $1.5 million. The cost of revenue is going up, and the gross profit went down. Total operating expenses have blown up, and the loss from operations has gone from a little over $2 million to almost $85 million in losses. There's a couple other numbers dealing with fair value of warrants as liabilities, but the total of other income is gone from a slight decrease to $157 million. So the information circled at the top of this slide is what was seen at the bottom of the previous slide. We also have net income of almost $72 million this last quarter, which is much better than the previous year. And the basic and diluted income per share is certainly going in the right direction. And this slide again shows you the basic and diluted earnings per share, as well as the total numbers which is being used in their calculations. So what about Matterport as an investment? I have a handful of shares that I bought a while back with some leftover money from a stock sale. My price was much higher than it is now, and I have it in a Roth IRA, so there's no sense selling it at a loss as I can't take it against gains. I think at these fairly low prices, now that the company seems, at least in the last quarter, to be making money, that Matterport may be a profitable speculation as a very small part of your well-diversified portfolio. Of course, their units are mainly used now in the real estate industry, which could be moving towards an overall decline due to, to the projected recession. But others have offered the opinion that their devices could be used as a component in the metaverse which does make some sense, but who knows how long that may be as far as time horizons are concerned. I'll look at the stock more in the future, but at this point, what do you think? Do you have any shares? If so, put the number in the comment section. And what do you think about their prospects going forward? I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Okay, that's enough for today. Hopefully by now you've subscribed to this channel and liked this video. I would love it if you looked at my other videos. Hopefully click on the like buttons on those and leave a comment, even a short one. All those things really help me out in building a following. Remember, nothing here is financial advice, simply YouTube entertainment. I'm just some guy from the internet that you don't know.
but I think that as you listen to my entertainment, you'll see some legitimate wisdom in it. Again, do your own research into what you think is appropriate for your portfolio, your risk tolerances, and your time horizon. I'm on Instagram at Anthony RR Mills. You can follow me there. Since this channel is not yet monetized, if you want to help me out, I sell small collectibles on eBay. Things like old stock and bond certificates, coins and banknotes, stamps and postal items, and books, along with other things such as Masonic items. If you're interested in buying silver coins as collectibles or investments, I usually have some listed. If you're interested in investing in gold or silver as a commodity, I have a few YouTube videos that explain how you can easily do that, plus some of the pitfalls in doing so. You can find my items on eBay with my username, stock underscore tycoon. Thanks for watching and good luck in investing.